Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JV here with another Cyber Insight video. Today it's going to be a quick one. I wanted to put together uh, a little bit of a, I don't know, not necessarily a program, but kind of a list of tips uh, to go over to help you better build a secure networking environment. So uh, I have 67 tips that I'm going to spread out over the course of, you know, the next month or two. And uh, we're just going to hop into that every day. I'm just going to come on and, you know, throw out uh, a couple of those. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on where I'm kind of pulling these tips from, because I'm not just, you know, making them up or pulling them out of my ass or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to be using the uh, DISA STIGs, and they have a particular STIG, which is for uh, network infrastructure policy. So if you're not familiar with uh, the DISA STIGs, they're uh, security technical uh, implementation guides that the Department of Defense uses as kind of baselines for whenever uh, any type of environment or devices are being built out for the military. Now, that doesn't mean that any of us have to actually be involved with anything on the government side or DOD side or anything like that. Really, the reason why I like this is because it's free and I think it does a, a pretty good uh, job of bringing together a whole bunch of useful information and putting it in a way where uh, anybody can really take it and use it as some guidelines. And that's what we're going to do. Some of these won't necessarily be completely applicable uh, to a, a small business or even a larger business or commercial environments. But I'm going to do my best to kind of take what the intent of the rule is and talk about how it can be useful for folks trying to secure uh, small or large business environments. So uh, just to give you a little little bit of background on where I'm pulling this stuff down from, um, and I'll also put this in the description information for this video so it'll be easy enough for uh, everybody to find it. There's one tool that you need called Stig Viewer, which is a Java application, uh, which lets us uh, read, uh, in essence, what's a checklist file. Uh, and as you can see here, we have a, a few different options uh, depending upon the operating system that you're going to be running the um, Stig Viewer on. And then as far as what you use within Stig Viewer is uh, different types of Stig checklists. And they have a whole bunch of different types of um, different checklists that are available. As you see here, there's almost 500 different ones that tell you how to secure different types of devices and environments. Everything from almost any type of network vendor you can think of to Red Hat, to Linux, to Windows, Active Directory, all of that. So really here to find the one that we're using, if you just type in network, and then we're going to go to the second page, and it's a network infrastructure policy STIG. You can download that. That's a zip file. Uh, when you open the STIG viewer, you actually will have, let me pop this up for you real quick so you can see this properly. Yeah, so you'll have uh, an application that opens like this. If you go over to uh, file, it'll let you open up a STIG. You can open it just as a zip file and it will populate it and then you'll be able to go from there. Uh, real quick breakdown on what we have going on uh, within this individual checklist. Pretty much everything is ranked into three different priorities, Cat1, Cat2, and Cat3. Uh, Cat1 is the most dangerous, the things that you really should make sure that you take care of within your environment. Cat2 is stuff that you should definitely still do as well. And Cat3 is kind of stuff where, yeah, the impact isn't necessarily that great, but it still would be kind of nice to have. When we look at the actual checklist file itself, as you see, we have all of these different rules. And then for each rule that we could click into, it has a title, a discussion, uh, a little bit of information on how you go about validating this, uh, this control within your environment or within the device. And then what you need to do as far as fixing it so that you're compliant with this implementation guide. If we were actually doing a real assessment on a real device or real network, we could also down at the bottom add in uh, some finding details and comments down here. And then also when we're done uh, doing whatever it is, you have a few different options and you can still, you know, if, if what you need to have is already properly in implemented, then you would mark it as not a finding. 
So it turns it green. Uh, if it's something that isn't even applicable to the device or the environment, you can go not applicable and that turns it gray. And then if it is something that you aren't able to fix or hasn't been fixed and you would leave it open, it turns it red. And then obviously you know that you need to go back and make some types of plans for that. And so you can kind of see over here on the left-hand side, you have a, a cute little uh, pie chart that you can look at as you kind of go down through this. So uh, in today's video, uh, just gonna talk about the first control, the first tip that we would wanna cover. And let's go back to not reviewed and let me blow this up a little bit for you so you can see it a little bit easier. We're going to be talking about making sure that your environment is documented properly. Now let's see, how does that look? Almost, let me just zoom out a little bit. And move it over. I think we're almost there. That looks good to me. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking about this first one, and it's dealing with documentation. And so, uh, oh, you're seeing a blank screen. Uh-oh. If anybody else is seeing a blank screen, let me know. It looks good on, it looks good on my side here um it is broadcasting both to twitch and to youtube though um so if anybody else hits me up and, and lets me know that they aren't seeing it then uh we can try and troubleshoot a little bit um so the the uh the title is network topology diagrams have to be maintained at all times and so the idea here is whatever you have as an environment you want to make sure that you have the right top right types of documentation. This here is mainly talking about diagrams, but also diagrams can mean a whole bunch of different things. You can be talking about rack elevations. You could be talking about um, actual network topology diagrams. You could talk about data flow diagrams. I would even take this a step further and uh, also list different types of uh, IP and host name lists would be really important. Um, you could even say configurations could fall into this group as far as different types of configuration or not config different types of documentation that you would want to maintain. Uh, depending upon the type of environment and how detailed you want to go, um, really can make this differ a little bit. Some people like to go and do a deep dive and have, you know, interfaces actually labeled, um, IP addresses, subnet masks, full host names. Um, I think it's a little bit of a balance because that can be a little bit tedious to continually update. So if you have some other types of monitoring tools in your environment, uh, you might want to rely a little bit more on those to kind of capture the, the dynamic information that might be changing. Um, and that, you know, really would still fall in line with making sure that you have continued and updated documentation. So let's see what else they say here. Validate any con connectivity, document on diagrams. So they're talking about physical connections, um, major networking components, so different types of devices. Make sure that those are included in your, uh, in your diagrams. And yeah, so I mean, that's really one of the first things that you want to do whenever you are building out an environment. This isn't something that you want to sleep on. You want to make sure that you do put the time in to do this properly. And as I mentioned, if you can automate this in some ways to make it continually be updated, um, that's a really, really good thing to do. Um, especially once you kind of determine which stuff is going to be more static and more on the diagram side versus something that might be um, lists and stuff like that, that you can pull via different types of scripts or SNMP or something like that. So uh, yeah, that's it for uh, tip one. Uh, the next tip that we're going to be talking about is going to be uh, looking at different types of network connections, both internal and external, and making sure that those are approved. So we will come back and do that tomorrow. Let me just go over to the chat real quick. Did have some folks drop in. Hey, man, what's going on? DJX Alpha, if you guys aren't following him, go give him a follow. He does a lot of awesome stuff. Um Let's see, I'm just gonna try and go through these real quick because I'm not trying to turn this into a 20 minute video. 
which I might have already done at this point, doing the, the background on uh, on the Stig and the Stig viewer. Well, all right. Says that the stream's coming in good there. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so it looks like not having issues on YouTube, but having issues on Twitch. All right, so I will uh, work on that and try and figure out why that is doing that. Uh, give it a try or take a look a few minutes later. I've noticed that before, um, for whatever reason, after I was done with the stream, then it would upload properly to Twitch. So um, if that's going to be what's going to happen, that kind of sucks. But I'm going to do a little bit more troubleshooting. So, all right. Uh, appreciate everybody who dropped in. I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye.